Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. Um, this is um, this is the Last Supper um, when Jesus actually meets with the disciples and uh, we actually get our um, our communion tradition from um, in remembrance of him and his sacrifice that he did for us, um, dying on the cross for our sins. Um, this takes place on the um, the first day, the eve of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, which is actually two days before actual Passover. Um, the um, the days worked differently back then. They considered a day when um, started or a day started when it got dark outside. So to us, this will be the starting in the evening and going through to the afternoon. But um, to them, it's two actual different days. Um, we're going to start off in Matthew chapter 6, verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Um, so at this time, they know as the disciples of Christ, it's their job to figure out the place and location of where to um, celebrate the Passover. Um, Passover is go, goes back to them remembering when um, God released them from the bondage of Egypt. Um, and recording in progress. So it looks like we can. You're still muted. I'm so sorry. Um, like I said, we got stuff to do the double steps in the way. Um, and then the screen just went down. Um, so um, once again, Passover is the day we recognize they, they recognize for when God released them from the bondage of Egypt with the the final um, the final plague the the, um, the test of um, Egypt when God told them to put the the blood across the um, their doorways any house that did not have the blood across the doorways um, would not be passed over their firstborn child would be taken. Um, and that's what the Passover is. They were passed, passed over by the plague because of the blood that was spilled in their behalf. And um, it's just so reflection of what Christ does for us. Um, and thank God that Jesus took the pain, paid the penance for sin, which is death for us. Um, we will not die. We have eternal life through him um, and only because of him. And that's why each Easter is so important as why his sacrifice was so important. The crucifixion was important because um, without it, without the pain, we would not have the glory. Um, and he paid that price for us because we couldn't, we couldn't even pay the price if we wanted to. Um, move on to verse 18. He replied, go into the city and a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my anointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover and my disciples at your house. So, um, so the disciples and did as Jesus had directed them to do in preparation for Passover. When e when the evening came, Jesus was reclin reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Um, so 
we know that um, Jesus sent off two of his um, disciples to tell this man, they never give the man's name, but um, in other books, they say that the man was carrying water, which made him recognizable because usually carrying water to the house was the, the duty of the wife or the, the woman of the house. So it made that person easily knowledgeable. Um, so they found the man and the simple fact that they, um, the man knew who the, their master was shows that um, Jesus was well known in this area and people um, in this, during this time, they, um, there's still a Jewish community amongst um, what they call pagans as well. But um, they, it was recognized as Jesus as the teacher and everybody knew him as like the main rabbi of this time period. So just by them saying that our teacher, our, our, our master um, wants, wants to use your house, that person, we don't know their name, they offer their house. They, they said, okay, go ahead and use my location um, in preparation for the Passover. Evening came, Jesus was reclining with the, with the 12 at the, um, at the table. At this time, um, there were no chairs. When they sat down, they reclined. They usually laid on one arm and ate with the other hand. Um, laid back and comfortable. Um, if it was me, I've been asleep already, um, eating at the table. <laughs> and while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. So um, this goes to show that Jesus knew well before Judas actually um, made the deal to sell him out. He knew that he was going to get sold out. Um, um, but we want to make it clear today that, yes, it was a part of God's plan, but Judas, God never tempted Judas to do, this, do so. Um, it wasn't his nature. God knows that we're going to sin before we do it, but he doesn't push us towards sin. Um, and that's a big difference. Um, like every commentary tells me that no matter what, uh, God does not tempt us. Um, and I know for a fact, God, there's no, there's no such thing of a good person trying to do a bad thing. Um, well, a good deity trying to do a bad thing. If they're pure, they're pure. It's pure love, joy, peace. Those are the things that come from Christ. Um, if it doesn't seem right, it's not right. Um, he does give us that, um, that internal compass of what's right and wrong for a reason. Verse 22, they were very sad and began to say to him one after another, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. So this, um, the dipping of the bowl still doesn't give uh, actual like outing of that person. Um, at this point of time, they are eating unleavened bread and they dip it in like a puree of different herbs and um, fruit and stuff like that, almost like a jelly. Um, and they, um, they do unleavened bread uh, because they don't have time for the bread to, to rise with yeast. It's another um, reminder of Passover because um, with Passover, they had to be ready to run as soon as the, um, the plague was over. Um, that's why they do the unleavened bread because it's supposed to be done on the go. The whole meal is supposed to be really fast. Unleavened bread, they're supposed to be fully... Um, with their sandals on, uh, rod in hand, um, like pretty much uh, fast food in this in in their day of age. Um, they're supposed to eat and run. That's what the whole <laughs> ceremony is supposed to be like. Um, verse twenty four: The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. 
it would be better for him if he had not been born. Um, so this is Jesus um, pretty much warning Judah, Judah uh, warning the, tra the traitor um, before he actually does, before the plan is actually set in full motion. Um, Judas, prior to the dinner, prior to the um, meeting, had already talked and came up with his, um, came up with the amount of money that he was going to get for selling up Jesus. Um, a lot of um, commentary says that he had no idea of the cruelty that Jesus would go through, but he was just going to be giving him up to the um, people, but they, he knew that they wanted to kill him regardless. Um, but that, there's no excuse for it. But uh, his name is forever in infamy uh, because of his acts. And um, we know after the fact he does end up taking his own life. Um, verse 25. Then Judas, the one who betrayed him, surely you do not mean me, Rabbi. Jesus replied, you have said so. So Jesus is really good at um, the low key pointing somebody out without everybody else knowing. <laughs> um, every, every other um, disciple said, surely you do not miss me, me, master or Lord. Um, Judas is the only one that called him rabbi, meaning teacher which actually lowers his, um, lowers his deity. It lowers the, the, it shows what he saw him as. He saw him as a teacher, but not his Lord. Um, all the other disciples saw him as Lord and savior. Well, not savior as of yet, but as their Lord. Um, to us, he's our Lord and savior. Um, but he's not savior yet until after the fiction. Um, Verse 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it <clears throat> and gave it to the disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body. So um, this is where we get our um, communion from. Um, this is what we do in remembrance of him. Uh, we try to do it at least once a month at our church. Uh, I know I've been to some churches that do it every week after service or with service. Um, so this is, um, this is another foreshadow of what's going to be happening to Christ, to Jesus. He knows what's going to happen. He knows the whole plan. He knows his father's plan. He knows that his body is going to be broken for the um, sins of the world, uh, for everybody that's sitting around him. And he's willing to go through that pain and that torture. He's willing to take the pain the price for our sins and everybody's sins including um the ones that don't believe him yet but um once they bend the knee blame him lord and savior they too can receive savior he, he they, they too can receive his gift of salvation and eternal glory verse 27 then he took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all you. This is my, my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many of the forgiveness of your sins. Um, so a lot of people don't realize this, but Old Testament and New Testament, um, Testament is another name for covenant. Um, so we can literally break up the Bible in two different covenants instead of calling test. Um, this is how we started our new covenant with Christ. We're no longer other, under, the, um, under the curse of the first covenant, which pretty much um, no man can live up to the Ten Commandments. Um, but now we have the right to give all our sins and lay it on Christ. He pays the price. Um, And um, this is also a representation of 
Passover once again. Um, Passover, they were not passed over until they actually had the, the blood put across their, um, across their doorways. Um, this is the new blood, our, our, our doorways to our hearts now. We take the blood on ourselves now. Um, so we're being bypassed by sin through Christ, who paid the price. Verse 29, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So this is just him reminding them that this will be our final meal together. Um, there's um, a sadness in the room already. They know that one of them is going to betray him and uh, Jesus is preparing them for his death. He's not going to be there with them always. He's going to be gone very soon in the flesh. Um, and I don't know how I personally would feel if I had a friend, um, let alone like a father, um, tell me that I'm not going to be with you much longer. Um, I, I've gone through some loss within like the last couple of years. I know we've all gone through loss. COVID, um, I've had friends go suddenly with accidents. Um, and you just feel like, even if you had that notion that you knew they were gonna come, that they're gonna go faster, um, it, loss is never a good thing. And no, it never feels good to lose somebody. Um, but his disciples don't fully realize at this point that he is gonna rise in three days. They don't fully know, they don't really get the full revelation of what Jesus has been telling them um, up to this point. But yeah, he's gonna be leaving them and once again, he's once he's full flesh, once he's when he comes back after being persecuted, after dying, that's when he'll be able to drink again with them. Um, and in the kingdom of heaven, once it's all over for them physically, but they're all still spiritually around. And this is the last um, scripture, last scripture of the text. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Um, so to end the, the ceremony, to end um, the, the ceremony of unleavened bread, um, first communion, and the start the new, they're going to sing a hymn. Um, I believe it's one of the hymns from the book of Psalms. Um, they don't give an exact number, but they don't give exactly which one it is, but they believe it's um, from Psalms 113 through 118. Um, but they don't know exactly which one or it, did they just ring off, read all the chapters of the Psalms. Um, back then, they probably didn't know it as chapters yet. They, had, they knew the text, but they probably didn't have the same kind of organization that we have in our Bibles today. Um, and um, this is just, we need to remember that Christ paid the price for us. He lived life in the flesh. He only took flesh for us. He was born on this side just to die for us on this side. Um, and that's something that we got we to take to heart. We have to, um, we have to really acknowledge everything he's done for us. Um, imagine you having a friend that you do everything for and they never acknowledge, say thank you for that. God's done it all for us. Every breath we take is thanks, thanks to him. Every step, I know every step I personally take is thanks to him. Um, being told I'll never walk again, but now I'm walking and talking every day. Um, and I thank God every day for that. And um, I'm gonna open the floor to anybody that has any questions, concerns, thoughts, um, worries. <laughs> Anyone? Amen. Thank you. Um my brother for such a wonderful lesson. Um, you know, and, um, you pointed out earlier that Jesus, not only did Jesus know what um, Judas would do, but God knew. And that God didn't tempt him to do it, but God had already taken it into consideration because God knows everything. He already knows what we're gonna do way before we do it. Uh, so that was already calculated by God that Judas would betray him. Judas had a choice. And as you said, even in, you know, in verse 24, 
when Jesus even warned them, you know, what would happen and that it would be how, what the consequences of it was. And I think that's the problem with sin. And as I looked at Father, forgive them, what I realized is we don't always take in the consequences of our actions, of our sins and, and how they will impact us. Um, and that's very important. We don't always take that into consideration. So um, in verses uh, 26 and 27, you know, I learned this almost 50 years ago in Sunday school, you know, about the first communion and what, what, what was taught to me. And I didn't, I, as many times, even in then, as I had heard it, I didn't always fully understand it. So I'm just going to share this nugget with you. In verse 26, Jesus blesses the bread. Okay, he blesses it. And in verse 26, he gives thanks for the wine. The wine, the fruit of the vine, represents his blood, which is already blessed. You know, so that's what I was taught as, as a kid concerning communion. You know, we bless the bread, but we give thanks for the wine, for the blood. We thank God for shedding of his blood. You know, because the word tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So those are two of the important lessons that I take for this. And I always teach, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, you know, it says, after the same manner, he took the cup. You know, in Matthew is the only one that gives this exact detail. The rest of them are not the same, you know. So, uh, and we know Matthew wanted to prove that Jesus was deity, that he was God. So um, I thank God for this passage, you know, because I think it, it's, there's such an importance on the blood. And I always say, you know, at the end of communion, we sing a song, we sing a hymn that when I was growing up at the Gethsemane Baptist Church, uh, that's what we did. We on, on Communion Sunday, we didn't have a benediction. The song was the benediction, and we went our way. And we know from here, he left. He went to the Mount of Olives, where he really gave the Lord's prayer, where he prayed for us, you know, those who would come after him from the disciples and those who will come after us. So uh, thank you for today's lesson. God bless you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. And while I'm here, just say happy birthday to my wife. Um, who's celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Uh, my brother, yeah, my brother, you did, you made the lesson very clear this morning. Thank um, you. We got to um, uh, realize too, that there's some Judas in all of us. Yeah. Just like there's some Peter, there's some Judas in all of us. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm glad to know that you're feeling better. Um, and um, like I said, I I li listened very tentatively and I did, I, I learned some things that I hadn't thought of before. But thank you for the clarity of the lesson. Thank you. I want to thank you very much for the lesson. I loved it. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, and Minister Eccles Jr. Um, there's some things I'd like to share to you. You start said on the first day, because there was many days, and um, one of your custom was is to have the dinner at everybody's house for that week. Um, mm -hmm. And most likely, you couldn't do it alone. You had to do it in a group or your entire family. Mm -hmm. And another thing I'd like to share, um, that um, sheep that they were eating, they took it to the temple first and burned the fat, and the, um, the priest would give it back, and that's what they would eat. Um, so that was interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, you just reminded me something I forgot I went over. Um when they did the lamb, they were not supposed to break any of the bones. They had to roast the lamb in full with the head and hooves still connected. And then they cut the meat off af after the fact. Um, but it's supposed to be a representation of Christ as well. 
as they um, Christ died before they broke his legs. Um, when you're crucified and you live longer, they break your legs, so your um, breathing is even worse. So you want to suffocate instead of just dying from being hung. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why Jesus died faster on the cross before his legs were broken. Um, in Psalms, I forgot the exact scripture, but it said that um, the um, the the savior would be killed, would be betrayed, killed, and without a broken bone. Um, and that's also a representation of the our final lamb, because you can't, you're not supposed to break the bone. It's supposed to be a lamb without a blemish that was killed for our behalf, um, for their behalf. But now uh, Jesus was the last sacrificial lamb. He was pay, he passed without a blemish as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Is there another? <laughs> so I'm going ahead and um, announce next week's um, lesson. Um, the res Resurrection of the King. It's the devotional reading is coming from um, Matthew chapter 28, one through 10. The background scripture will be Matthew 27. And then once again, Matthew 28 verses one through um, our, our teacher will be um, Minister Beverly Eccles the Great, um, the, thir the first mother of uh, Fellowship Baptist Church. Uh, I mean, King to Praise Ministries, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, it's been a long day already. Um, but um, I'm gonna have um, Pastor Eccles give us our closing prayer. And uh, Minister Eccles, we will take her over at Fellowship. So, <laughs> so we'll be happy to have her. Uh, so uh, next week, uh, Sister Eccles, just report to fellowship. <laughs> um, All right, let us pray. Father, we are grateful yes, Lord. for the path that Jesus tried for us. We're grateful. Heading toward a great time of remembrance of what you've done. We're grateful for the blood that was shed for us. We're grateful, God, for another day. We pray this day, God, you will help our hearts to grasp afresh what it means to be your child and the price that was paid for us. Let us live our lives in the light of that sacrifice you made. Help us, oh God, to represent you well. Where we go, be glorified through our lives. We thank you for this lesson of reminding us this word, reminding us of all that you've done on our behalf. For this, we give you thanks and praise. The Father, please be with us as we go to our various houses of worship this day. We want you lifted up as we celebrate and we say Hosanna to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And this week especially, walk with the King. God bless you. God bless.